Hi year three and four. Now first of all we just want to say that you have blown our socks off as we knew you would with all the work you've been sending in based on our topic. You've been sending in artwork, amazing artwork. You have been sending in science experiments, giant icebergs are being melted across Long Eaton and Beeston and you have sent us some wonderful history, You've seen a brilliant timeline or two coming through our emails. So thank you so much for carrying on your English master's learning in the comfort of your own homes. Now, just like a normal topic, we thought we would introduce a new mentor text. So a new text that will help guide your learning in a slightly new direction, but related to our overall topic theme of home. Now this text, you might have seen it around school. It is called A Journey for Hope. And if you have seen it or read it, you will know that there are some similarities between this book and A Journey Home. And that's because it was inspired by that book. The book you're about to hear, read by the wonderful Mrs Thompson, was actually written by current year five pupils when they were in year three. And they looked at the Journey Home book and got some really good ideas from it to write their own book, which we then had published. So listen really carefully to this story because you will see exactly why we've chosen it to help extend your understanding of all of the geography, science and history related to our topic. This story is called A Journey for Hope and it was written by some of our English Martyrs children a couple of years ago. The bicycle wobbled from side to side as the four friends jumped on and steered along the smooth road. I don't see why we have to explore the planet, mumbled the royal python sleepily as he wrapped around the mudguard, slithering his tail over for safety. I'm really excited that we're going to see the world, explained Meerkat. She was steering and looking out for danger. Well, I'm not so sure about this. Pygmy Hedgehog said nervously, hanging onto the pedals because she was so small. Sss, said Hissing Cockroach. He was only tiny and he peeped over the basket looking out for danger. The wobbly bicycle set off over the mountains and eventually rolled down to the beach. Pygmy Hedgehog raced ahead as she could roll into a ball, but before long, they all saw a terrible sight. The once sparkling and glittering sea had been ruined by plastic. Oh no, said Meerkat. What can we do? said the royal python. I know, I'll quickly roll around in all of the plastic to catch it on my spines, squeaked the pygmy hedgehog happily. I don't think that will help, said Royal Python. I hope someone can help clean the ocean. Sssss, said Hissing Cockroach. I hope someone can help clean the ocean. The rickety bicycle set off around the coast until they got to the deep, dark forest. Royal Python slithered ahead because he was so fast, but before long, they all saw a terrible sight. The once magical blooming, blossoming trees were being cut down by big hairy men with chainsaws. Oh no, said Meerkat. What can we do? said Pygmy Hedgehog. I know, I'll slither up the trouser legs of those men cutting trees and that will scare them into stopping, grinned Royal Python. I don't think that will help, said Meerkat. I hope someone can help save the forest. said the hissing cockroach. I hope someone can help save the forest. And I hope someone can help clean the ocean. The shaky bicycle set off from the forest towards the distant skyscrapers. Meerkat scuttled ahead as she was the lookout, but before long, they all saw a terrible sight. The once beautiful town filled with lovely people was now crowded with cars, scooters and motorbikes. The smoke, oil and pollution was hurting all the animals and the people. Oh no, said Pygmy Hedgehog. What can we do? 
said Royal Python. I know, I'll run into the middle of the road, I'll find a rock to stand on and I'll shout, stop, announced the meerkat. I don't think that will help, said Pygmy Hedgehog. I hope someone can help stop cars polluting, said the hissing cockroach. I hope someone can help stop cars polluting. I hope someone can help save the forests. I hope someone can help clean the ocean. The four friends set off on their journey and eventually reached a quiet, peaceful town. They trudged along slowly, fearing their hopes would come to nothing. But before long, they saw a wonderful sight. A group of bright young school children were hoping the exact same things. I hope someone can help clean the ocean. I hope someone can help save the forest. And I hope someone can help stop cars polluting. Oh, wow, said a little boy called Luke. What can we do? wondered Evie, one of the girls. I know, we could pick up all of our litter before it goes into the ocean, said Olivia. I know, we could all ride bikes to school instead of driving, squealed Sarah. I know, whenever we chop a tree down, we should plant some more, shouted James. I think that might help, they all said. On the distant horizon, the bicycle wobbled as the four friends clambered back on. Meerkat, Royal Python, Hissing Cockroach and Pygmy Hedgehog. I'm so glad we decided to explore the world, giggled Pygmy Hedgehog joyfully. I'm so glad we found someone who can help save the planet, agreed Meerkat with a smile. Yes, said the Royal Python. Hope is a wonderful thing. I'm hysterically happy, said the hissing cockroach. So we hope you can see exactly why we chose that new book for you. There's some new animals to research in there, some new environmental issues to learn about, some new habitats to investigate. So lots of new directions we can take our learning in. And I wonder what your year three and four teachers and teaching assistants could possibly dream up that would help you with this new learning. So since the animals have been on their own journey around the planet, I thought I'm going to plan my own little travel adventure. Maybe thinking about countries I could visit, places I could go, how I'm going to get there, how long it's going to take me, how much money it might cost. Sounds like a good plan to me. I'm going to find out about the animals in the story. Could they be friends in real life? I'm going to do some research on food chains and I think I'm going to present my findings in a creative way. Just like the animals, I was inspired by the children in the story and now I want to do some geography to find out how different countries are affected by climate change in different ways, like Kenya, Brazil, China or Greenland. I might also want to find out how the global lockdown is changing the environment as well. I could also be a scientist and measure weather changes in my local area by making an anemometer or a rain gauge out of recycled materials. And then I think I might use my literacy skills to write a letter to a big company to ask about their climate change impact. Why not get creative with music? You could write a composition using sounds to imitate the animals. Get creative with objects around your house, or you could even use your voice, like to imitate the hissing of the cockroach. You could fill a bowl with breadcrumbs or rice that sounds just like the snake. You could find a pack of biscuits and make a grunting noise of a meerkat. Or you could fill glasses up with varying amounts of water and this makes different sounds too. 
What could you find around your house that sounds like a meerkat, a cockroach, a hedgehog or a snake? based on characters in our story. Can we select the right material for them? Can we join different materials together? Most importantly, can we make our product strong? Now, once we've made the masks, it might be time for some drama. book has inspired me to think about recycling a little bit more so I'm going to choose something that no longer has a use and hopefully recycle it into something that can be used for many years to come. great art we could do of course we could look at the characters in the story we could look at the landscapes we could look at the cityscape we could learn about perspective in art so much we could do i really like this book a journey for hope but i was thinking that the animals in it are a long way away from english martyrs spawn I'm just wondering if we could write our own story with maybe some endangered animals that live nearer to where we do. Hmm. You don't tell Mrs. Jones I'm swinging on her chair. <laughs> checking in on YouTube, keep emailing us your work and keep on having fun. Bye for now! Mm -hmm.